are not always thrilled about our traffic, but if we added a couple more freeways through Seattle, would it have been better? Activists fought against more freeways in our city in the 60s and 70s, like the potential R.H. Thompson Expressway you see on the left that would have started at the 520 bridge and then cut down south through the CD. On the right is what the area looks like today. So here to explain more from a new historical archive from Seattle activists celebrated and honored. Welcome, Anna Rudd. It's so good to see you. Nice to meet you. Thank you for having me. This predated um, me. So let's talk about, first of all, what is Seattle Arch? Okay, well, Arch is a group of history enthusiasts and former freeway fighters, mm -hmm. myself being one, who came together because we realized its story is not well known. I and didn't know it. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know it. I'm not sure if people in general did, but it's a fight that was had in the 60s and 70s. What was it all about? And so the uh, Seattle Freeway Revolt uh, goes back to planning, highway planning in the 50s and 60s mm -hmm. was dominated by highway engineers. And um, in, uh, when, when Seattle started <coughs> completing, uh, let's see, at the time Seattle was completing I-5, three major freeways were proposed from this huge network of map, network of freeways that had been proposed starting about 1959, mm -hmm. sometimes known as the one mile grid. And so the three <coughs> highways were the R.H. Thompson, which you've already mentioned. It was a 15 mile swath that was going to run from south of Boeing Field to north uh, up to Bothell. And, and then uh, there was the Bay Freeway, which would connect I-5 to the Seattle Center. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, designed to be sort of like the Alaska Way Viaduct and was going to be at the south end of Lake Union. And then the third one was an enormous, massive I-90, approximately 14 lanes. What? <laughs> that was going to cut, uh, slash through Mount Baker Ridge and then um, have an enormous interchange with the R.H. Thompson in the central area, which at the time was primarily uh, a, a lower income and a lot of African Americans. And because of all the locations that were affected, we ended up with an incredibly diverse group of people who came around and uh, began to work together to try to come up with a better way. And I have an example here. Um, this uh, is an example of a document. It was an open letter to the city council and the mayor at the time. To um, And it just shows there were like 12 different organizations that all signed this. So um, anyway. And you managed to to actually accomplish what you set out to accomplish. And, and if somebody had told me the story that there were some local activists who you know, trying to stop three different big highway projects that have been in the planning for some years, I would have said, no way, they couldn't do it. Why, in a nutshell, do you think you were okay. successful? Well, I, uh, of course, I like to say we were on the right side of right. But, <laughs> um, Even when you're sitting in traffic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. Uh, I don't think <laughs> Nothing's that ha perfect. having another freeway is probably not going to solve the problem, which I'm sure is why people voted for sound transit. We did a lot of things. We didn't have the cell phones. We didn't have right. the internet. We did a lot of telephoning. We did a lot of mailing. There were rallies. So we had like a Save the Arboretum rally and 3,000 people came. They thought maybe 1,000 would turn up. They couldn't believe it. It probably helped. It was a sunny Sunday afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there was some successful people power going on. And um, there were other groups. Czech had worked on uh, some of the city council. CORE had worked on helping black and white people mm -hmm. learn to talk to each other. So it was a very exciting time. And um, there were several lawsuits that helped bring things to the fore. Um, and let's see, I'm going to see, I think we have this one. Uh, the most exciting thing was um, that the election was finally held for a variety of reasons. After about three or four years of very intense citizen activism. Mm -hmm. And in 1972, the city, the citizens of Seattle voted to stop both the R.H. Thompson Freeway forever 
and the Bay Freeway. It's forever. amazing what was accomplished. I'm sorry I missed the revolution, but there is an archive. <laughs> and if you'd like yeah. to see the Freeway Revolt archive for yourself, you can find the link on New Day's website. I think you'll find it really interesting. Thank you so much. We'll be right back.